This is an Islamic look at the end times. People are using these terms. People are reflecting on this. It comes out in the media, it comes in the movies, it comes in books. The idea of an apocalypse, the idea of the end of civilization, or the end of life as we know it. And so we are looking at the issue of the final countdown. Let's begin by saying what the Dajjal, that word, means. Dajjal is an Arabic word meaning, you know how you have someone who lies? You've got a liar, a liar, someone who says something that's not true, right? And it's something worse than just lying. It's when you mix truth with false and you say it and show it in a way that anyone who hears about it or looks at it they believe it and it's so hard to disprove it to say it's not true because it's mixed with truth and false so you know if i want to make up a story and i made it all a lie Sooner or later, you're going to find out that it was just a lie because there's nothing truth about it. And it's not going to make much sense because it doesn't follow, it doesn't, doesn't, it won't make sense. But if I put some truth in it and some names that are true, it's going to be much harder for people to find out that I'm lying about it because they're going to find out, hold on a minute, he was true about this, then that means he must be true about that. You understand what I'm saying? There is a word for it today in the 21st century and it's called deception Dajjal means the closest word I know of in English is deception you know when you watch stuff on Hollywood any movie that's what they do a lot of the times if you have ever listened to music and we all we all hear music when we go to the shops or we Wherever we go, music is playing, you know, not, let's not lie to ourselves. Music is everywhere, isn't it? Isn't it? You go to school, there's music. What can you do? But in the music, there's also words and lyrics. All right. And things that the artists, the musicians do on stage and say that also is called deception. So what do they do? They show you things and sing things that sound nice, which makes it easier for you to believe because you get moved, right? You start moving to the beats. Isn't that correct? And everybody else listens to it. And then you think, man, I'm going to be left out. I better listen to this stuff. I better watch it. Yeah. And you think it's cool and it sounds nice, you know, because it's the shaitan's um, voice. So it sounds nice. It really moves you. And what happens in there is that they take the opportunity to make you believe things that you're not supposed to believe. In the music industry, I won't say names of musicians, but for example, there was this musician and the likes of her and him a lot. She stood up on stage and then what she did was she kissed another music musician, another woman. She's a woman and kissed another woman on her lips on stage. All right. And that was only a few years back and everybody goes, what? This is disgusting. This shouldn't be done. But what she said was, she goes, we musicians, we have a role to play. I'm sick and tired, this is what she said. I want you to listen carefully. I'm sick and tired of people following rules and order. Following rules and order. Correct? And I want people to go out of these rules and orders and do what they want to do. So I'm going to promote this relationship of woman with woman right and as time went on it became normal isn't that correct normal there's lots of things now that if you went 15 years back they were so abnormal am i right now they're normal do you know what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say that there are things long time ago were not normal and then somehow people say things and in the minds of young people as you grow up 
you start to believe that they're actually very, very normal. Did you know that? In Norway, there's an article that I read that there are people protesting. They're going to the government to say if they can marry their pets. Wallahi. And there are other people in Texas, in America and other places, they are saying to legalize something called pedophilia with children. And there are others who are saying we want to legalize incest. Brothers and sisters marrying each other. Brothers, do you know what I'm trying to tell you here? I'm trying to talk to you about the Dajjal. But before I talk about the Dajjal, did you know that things are going to happen before the Dajjal comes? You see, deception. Deception, which is to mix truth with lies and make people believe it and make it so hard to disbelieve it. That doesn't happen overnight. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the Dajjal from the time of Adam, Adam alayhi salam, till the end of time, from the time of Adam, till the end of time, this entire world, he said, there is no bigger trial, fitna, than the trial of the Dajjal. All the way from Adam alayhi salam to time, to the end of time, everything that's happened in the world, Dajjal is the biggest trial that's going to come to the people. Now, before the Dajjal can come, a road, a path is being prepared for him to come. So that he can be accepted immediately. Alright, I'm going to tell you how he's going to be accepted and why. The Dajjal is the one-eyed, the liar, the deceiver. For him to deceive the people so good and to be the biggest trial, the people would have already been gotten used to deception already. We have to live in a time of what we can call in Arabic Dajjal, a time of deception, so that the real deceiver can come. It's all set up for him. Do you understand? So it's deception. And the shaitan helps the Dajjal. Do you, know, do you know that the shaitan, Iblis, Iblis, the head of the shayateen, right from the beginning when Adam salam was created, he said something so interesting. He goes, you know the people who follow you know, the children of Adam? You know the children of Adam? Those who are Muslim, those who follow your book, O Allah, I am going to go to their religion. I'm going to sit waiting for them at their religion. And I'm going to make them believe a different religion. I will make them practice their religion the wrong way. One example is I'm going to make them show off. So when they come to pray, they're only doing it to please the people. Right? I'm going to make imams out of them who just want to bring people to them so they can show off and look like he's in charge of a big group. I want to make people who they want to just be part of a group like, like gangs in the name of Islam, but they're not really sincere. The shaitan is going to come up. I'm sorry I spoke about the imam. Yani we, we're all imams, inshallah. But I'm going to say, brothers and sisters, that the shaitan is going to deceive even some imams. He'll deceive you, he'll deceive me. Why? In preparation for the Dajjal. Now, the reason I said imam is because of this. Get ready. All the deception has to happen because when the Dajjal comes out, he doesn't call himself an Imam. You know what he calls himself? He calls himself Prophet Isa السلام, himself. He calls himself Prophet Isa. I am Prophet Isa. But he's lying. Listen to what the Prophet وسلم, said. He said, one night, one night, he was going on Isra' al Ma'raj. So he said, Jibreel السلام, took me to the Kaaba. And I was praying at the Kaaba. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim for whoever wants to see it. He says he took me in front of the Kaaba. And then after I finished, I looked, to, I looked to, to my right or left. And I see a young man. His hair is nice and long. It comes up to his shoulders. It's neither too straight nor too wavy. And it looks like water is on it, but it doesn't really have water. So it's got really beautiful, silky, shiny hair. And his face, his features is dark, Adami which means he's got a dark features. And he had two people with him that he was putting his hands on their shoulders. And I liked the way he looked. So I asked Jibreel, who is that? And Jibreel said, that is your brother, Isa alayhi salam. Isa ibn Maryam. 
the real Isa. He goes, then I looked to the other side and I saw another young man. And this young man, he was one of the biggest sizes that I've ever seen. He wasn't tall, but he was just big. And his hair was very coarse, very rough hair, right? And one of his eyes, the right eye, it was bulging like a grape, but it, but it, but, but the, but the, you know, the black part, you know, the, the iris, you know, that inside, it's like a sultana. It, he can't see from it. It's, it's, it's gone. So he can't see from it. It's blind from, from the right eye. And the left eye, he also called it in another hadith, he says it's awar as well. Awar means it's deformed, deformed. Awar doesn't mean blind, it means deformed. So you're going to see hadith which Prophet said, his right eye is deformed, sometimes we'll say his left eye is deformed. What it means is that the right eye, he cannot see from it, mutfi eye, he doesn't see it. And the left eye also looks unusual. It's got like a piece of meat under it and it doesn't look normal. I think he even has a different color, but he can see from it. So both his eyes are deformed. They don't look normal. But one, the right eye can't see from it, the left eye can see from it. That's why he's called al awar al dajjal the one with the deformed eyes. It doesn't necessarily mean the one-eyed Dajjal. You know how sometimes they put on the movies a big, uh, what do you call it, Cyclops. You know the Cyclops with one big eye here? Yeah, you've seen them on, on, on Lord of the Rings? Big Cyclops. So it's just something connecting with the young ones. So he's got a big eye. That's not what the Dajjal looks like. The Dajjal, he sees with one eye, which is the left, but both his eyes are deformed. Okay? So Prophet is describing him to us so well. Anyway, he says, and he had two people and he was, uh, you know, leaning on their shoulder. And the Prophet said, Oh Jibreel, who is that? And he said, That is Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. In another hadith, he actually said something else. He said, Isa ibn Maryam is Al-Masih Al-Sadiq. Or Al-Siddiq, which means the Masih, which means the Messiah. But he is the truthful Messiah. And then he turned to the actual Dajjal and he said, that's the, he's also the Messiah. He said Messiah, but he is the lying Messiah. And Masih has several meanings. The ulama gave it 30 different meanings, maybe even 40 or 50. But one of the main meanings means for Dajjal, Mamsuh Al-Ain comes from Masih, which means his eye is wiped off. He can't see from it. Other scholars that also said, which is also correct, he said Masih meaning he will travel the entire world or spread out through the world. You understand what I'm saying? So this is the name of Isa alayhi salam. The real one is the name of Dajjal. But Masih, the liar, and Masih, the truthful one. You get it? A Dajjal is the deceiving liar. Between his forehead, like when you see the Dajjal, he goes, everyone who can read or can't read will recognize it. Bayna aynayhi, on his forehead, between his two eyes, so here. There is the word kafir or kufr, which means disbeliever. The Dajjal is kafir, which means he's showing you the wrong thing. Okay? And what will happen is that the Muslims will recognize it and stay away. It will be very, very hard for them. And the people start following. And they follow him because he also shows miracles. Well, that's what he calls them. He calls them miracles. But Allah gave him certain trials. For example, the Prophet ﷺ told us that he will get to a mountain, a hill. And he will order all of its treasures to come out and the treasures will be found very easily as if as if they're serving him he will order clouds to come and unite and he will make the rain fall in lands that are that don't grow and the people look and they go oh wow oh wow he gave us crops and he starts doing all these things right the people who don't follow him they live in, in hardship in misery they're going to get hungry they're going to get thirsty they, it's very very hard on them so the rest start following him after a few days what does he say he says, I am God. I am your Lord. I am God. And then the Jal will roam the earth. 